Good evening, everyone. This is James coming to you from Dividend Stock Talk, where we talk about dividend stocks investing for monthly and weekly cash flow, mainly because my bills come every week, and I like to get my money working for me better than it usually does. Anyway, better than conventional. You know what? You know what's interesting? My dad was talking about uh, selling his business, and, and I asked him, so, Dad, what are you going to do with all the money? He says, I'm going to put it in the bank. <laughs> I laugh. I always laugh when people tell me they put all the money in the bank. He's from that era, the era where, you know, uh, well, they had to go through the Depression and they had to li listen to the parents and say, you don't put your money away, don't put it in the bank. They did this, they did that. And it's like, I'm from the generation where it's like, you know, hey, you make your money and put it to work. You know, you, you spend all this time, you know, 30, 40 years of your life working and then you get to the end of your life. Well, sorry, you get to the end of your working life and you want to retire, but you need a certain amount of money to retire to re retire comfortably. So what do you do with the money? Put it in the bank? How much do you have to have to put in the bank in order to live 20, 30, 40 years? What are I having to work again? Interesting account. I mean, interesting thought. You know, I'm in my 50s, <coughs> early 50s, and I want to retire. I, I want to, you know, work if I feel like it, not because I have to. There's a lot of people I've met that, you know, similar to my age, and they still feel like they have to work. And I, for some strange reason, I just don't buy into it. I don't, you know. I want to put my money to work and make it, you know, keep my expenses low and get my, my money working, give me weekly and monthly cash flow so that I can have the privilege of saying, no, I don't feel like working today. Don't get me wrong. I enjoy working. I enjoy doing something that I enjoy doing, you know, working because I feel like I have to. Ooh, I hate that more than anything else. Anyway, let's just jump on in. It's 11.30, uh, 11.32, Thursday, October 12th. And here we are going to talk about some dividend stocks because we want our money to go a little bit further than anyone else. You know what's interesting? Let me, let's get out of this one and go into the other account for a second. Now, I was asked today, why do I show, right here, let's take a look at this right here. Why do I show paper money or simulated trading? Okay, now, if you've noticed or if you've followed with me for a while, you will notice that I have several accounts. Now, the reason why I have several accounts is because there's so many different trading strategies. And depending on where you are with your experience as a trader, would be where you want to focus your energy. Now, if I show my personal account, I do all kinds of weird stuff. You know, I do uh, I do spread trading. I do something that's called cross margining. Now, I had to make phone calls. I must have talked to at least 20 or 30 different brokers to find out who would allow me to do spread trading. Now, you see, most of my trading is, is done here on Thinkorswim, but Think a swim doesn't allow cross margin trading. What is cross margin trading? <laughs> That's where you're mixing stock futures with covered calls. You kind of incorporate the two together because one is totally one is a future and one is an option on a stock. Now, futures is not a stock, it is kind of like an option on a stock, but it's not, it's a future. It's, it, it can be very confusing. And if I showed you what I do personally, it would confuse the hell out of you. So each one of these accounts, like this account here we're looking at right now, this is strictly dividend capturing. Wait, 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 I'm sorry. This one, I have to get them straight myself. This one here is dividends on steroids. Okay, that's where we buy the, div, buy the stock 10 days prior to the EX date and we have a preset uh, or a trigger trade preset for a 2.5% increase. Because I found that over the years, investing in dividend stocks, they have a tendency to move up a certain percentage. Now, some of the software I have gives you that percentages that it moved in that time frame, So you can use that if you feel like it to judge where you think it's gonna go this time. But dividends on steroids is preset for 2.5 percent return now uh, last year i believe the 
I believe the trading account did a 26% return just on dividends on steroids. Now, the options account, now, or let's, let's jump over to the options account. All right. This is the options account. All right. Now, this is strictly uh, credit spreads and debit spreads. And every once in a while, I will throw in a, a covered call if I get stuck with or um, some stock. Now, this is a more advanced um, trading strategy because a lot of people don't understand that you're buying and selling something at the exact same time. How can you sell something you don't own? How can you buy? It, it, it can be very. It is very confusing. It took me a while to get the hang of it. I've been trading for almost thirty years, and uh, <coughs> this is my favorite one to to teach because uh, I would. I'd like to have everybody to aspire to this level because this level can get you triple digit returns safely because stocks move in a certain predictable pattern. And that's why this one is so favorable. So I have several different accounts and each one hones in on a certain type of strategy. Now I don't want to, uh, I'm not gonna cherry pick and say, all right, we're gonna do just AT&T or we're gonna do just Apple, or we're gonna do just Yahoo. I'm not going to do that because then it, it, it leaves out all the other possibilities, okay? So I figured if I, if I have several different accounts and if you're interested in, in dividends only, then pay attention to that account on what's going on in that situation. If you're interested in mixing it up a little bit, buy a little bit of stocks, a little bit of options, do some covered calls, maybe a spread trade here and there, hey, fine, watch all of them. You know, but for the most part, yeah, I do paper trading because number one, I want to stay on top of my game. Okay, so it, it it keeps me from making mistakes. Which you know, after thirty years, I still make mistakes. But by having several different accounts and by trading certain strategies in each one, it, it allows me to hone in and get better. So when I'm talking to a person after when I talk to a prospective client or a prospective student, I can find out by asking questions where they are at what level, okay? So I have to go through my head and figure out what to say, what not to say. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm not gonna tell you about something that you're not gonna be able to grasp, that you're not gonna be able to understand. Now, this channel here, basically, I'm just doing for, um, you know, spread trading for those people that wanna get higher returns. And we also have the other account, which is, oh, this is the spread trading. Spread tradings and options covered calls. This one's a little bit more complex. As you can see, the profit, oh, where we go? Okay. The overall profit year to date is 70,000. Now, that's 70% return on, on capital, but is it really? No, it's not, because once you come over here, the account statement, you roll all the way down. <clears throat> Let's roll all the way down for a second. All right, this is the number. These are the numbers down here that are the important numbers. Okay, now I don't do forex at all, so that is ignore that number. The net liquid liquidation value two hundred fifty four thousand six hundred ninety three. That's not all real money. That, my friends, is number one. <coughs> I start each account at the beginning of the year at a certain amount, $100,000. Some of them are allowed to have what they call um, margin money. Some you can, some you can't. For options, you cannot use margin money. But these numbers here represent what the liquidation value is. But this number here Oops, come on. Right here, $13,997. That, my friends, is total commissions and fees here today. So you take that number and you subtract it from the overall profit. So we're making over 57%. Okay, although it says here profit year to date. Yes, that is the profit year to date. So you take that number, you subtract away all the fees and commissions, and that's what your actual profit is. Okay, now that's for those people that want to trade uh, options and spreads and 
uh, covered calls and more complex strategies. If you want to stick to simple, easy ones, this account right here basically deals with, um, like I said, dividends on steroids, where we buy it 10 days prior to, and then we sell before the EX date. Every once in a while, we will hold the stock longer, collect the dividend, and then sell it for a profit as you get on. That's a very simple, easy trading strategy. However, as you can see, the profit year to date is a lot less than the other one. Now, in this count last year, we did 26%. Now, uh, these other, uh, like DFS, let me quickly click onto this. DFS, we've been holding onto this stock since April. Okay, we collected dividends three times. Johnson & Johnson. <clears throat> oh, well, it sold. Oh, wait, actually, we bought it uh, last month, and we finally sold it this month. We we held it for almost a whole month, but we made we made money on that one. Uh, here's the biggest loser we've had so far this year, Macy's. Now, we bought Macy's in February, okay? Um, as you can see, we collected dividends on this twice, and we should be collecting dividends again next month. If, and I seriously doubt it's going to get back to where we got, um, right, let's open it up over here. Macy's, so I can show you where Macy's is. Now, we bought Macy's, like I said, in February. Da, 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 da. Okay, at 33.09. Now, I could have, throughout the year, sold a lot of weekly options against, the, against that 1,600 shares, but I'm restricting this account to uh, dividends on steroids only. That's the only strategy I do this. I do not sell options against these, which in my own personal account, I would, and that would be confusing for some people. But I don't want to confuse people, so I want to just show them the simple, easy trading strategies for each. I'll show you the accounts and actual trades that you could possibly do on actual tradings. So, so why I don't show my own? Because it's confusing for other people. If you want to look at, you know, just dividends, fine. Look at the A trading account as just dividends. You want to look at um, just option trading, fine. We're going to do the, the account looks just option trading. You want to do a, 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 a mix of everything, fine. Look at the accounts that have mixes of everything. No, I don't have, you know, $600,000 to put 100000 here, 100000 there, 100000 there. No, I don't have that. Sorry. Just ain't good. So I show you these paper trading accounts to give you an idea of what you can do, what is available, and to walk you through trades for companies that are coming up based on this the uh, software that I've created for this type of trade. Okay, uh, as I was saying, uh, Macy's we've had that for quite a while. Um, February, so um, that is. We got uh, dividends. We should have got one more because we're in the fourth quarter. We got that in the first quarter. So I got to double check on that one. Yeah, first, second, and third quarter. Yeah, the first quarter. Oh, yeah, with the, yeah, the third, which is. Okay, so they got that in February. So we pick up the dividends in March. This one you get. In, Okay, so March, and then 7, and then, then 12. Okay, so we get to two more dividends again for the end of the year. All right. But as you can see, I got uh, Macy's at 33. Right? 33.09. It has been at 33 since February, right up here. See this little bubble right there? Okay, she started out... Can't go back that far, can I? That been too far ago. All right, so we got it right in here, and it just stair stepped down. Okay, 
uh, trading level 32 that's when we got in because the you know, software said great and it, it, it did everything we wanted it to do but it just didn't stay where it wanted and then she stair stepped down she found a trading range of 29 and then she dropped down to a trading range of 22 23 and now she's at 2021 in that area so this is what she's been lately. Why is that? I don't know. Maybe it's online shopping. People don't want to go into Macy's anymore. They want to shop online. So Macy's just tumbling and tumbling. It will probably may never sell out of that 1,600 shares if she doesn't get back to 33. So I might have to carry that into the new year. Who knows? You know what? Let's... No, let's not do that. Let's get back to where we were. All right, so that was Macy's. That was a trading account. Okay. So that's this trading account. This, like I said, dividends on steroids only. It's a certain strategy, and there's no options involved with it whatsoever. You're getting, at this moment in time, even though we're at... DFS, we're low at DFS. Uh, all right, let's pull up DFS. DFS. All right, DFS starts out a year ago at 54, which was the low of the year. Takes about uh, a couple of weeks in the 55, 56 area. And then <clears throat> a couple of weeks later, she's in the new trading range of 72. So she goes from 54 to 72 in a very short time frame and finds the high of the year at uh, 73.35 all right drops a little bit down that could be profit taking i know because that's a nice little profit from 54 to, to 72. Okay, a little bit of profit taking then it's, try it's trying to stay up in the 71 area but it's just not quite doing it drops back down to 66 and it finds a trading area in the 60s area and she's jumped back up to 65 66 where she is nowadays and look at this a nice little uptrend right there however not good enough because one, two, three, four, five down days in a row for DFS. Now we've had DFS. Hold on, let's uh whoops. Let's go back. Oh. There we go. <clears throat> let's go back again and look at DFS. Now we got DFS. Like I said, back in April. January, February, March, April. Way in here. Okay. At, uh, what's our selling point? 67.18. That's what we're looking for. That's what we actually, we paid probably 67.17. So we like one cent over, which is a little bit of a profit. Not a whole heck of a lot. Probably enough to take care of our commissions. But, um. Uh, that's the old idea behind the whole strategy of dividends on steroids is is to either collect the run up coming in to the EX date, all right, just before it pays off the dividend, um, and then get out. It doesn't always happen that way, you know. Um, well, let's give you a quick assessment here. All right, these are all the trades we've done in this account. We got three that are in the negative, um, five that didn't do anything. All right, now all these here are all profit. Okay, five, two, 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 two. So as you can see, we made quite a bit of money with this trading account. But why is it showing we're only up 4,000? Well, the reason is right here, Macy's. We got $19,000 loss on Macy's and a almost $10,000 loss on Tanger factory outlets. I mean, that is just killing us, those two right there. So if these two went back to a zero, we'd be up a hell of a lot higher, you know, because that's like $30,000 right there. You know, you add that to all this, and that's well over, well, you get uh, 30, five another ten about forty percent return but we can't do that because you get these three that are I, i'm not gonna say losers but they are hindering our return 
But if you think about it, 4% return is 400%, no, 300% more than what you'd get if you put your money into a CD. Now, come on. Everybody knows who Johnson & Johnson is. Everybody knows who Macy's is. Okay? Other companies we got into, Halliburton, Staples, Hershey's, uh, MGM Resorts, MasterCard, Lockheed Martin, Target, Colgate. All these are big name companies. Dollar General, Johnson & Johnson, uh, Valero Energy, DuPont, Walmart, Citigroup, Caterpillar, General Dynamic. Huge. These are all well-known companies. So we're not in, in investing in Bob's Pizza or Tony's Shoes. No, these are companies that you know of and they've been around for a while. They've had uh, increased dividends for a minimum of 25 years or a minimum of 10 years because that's our software only goes back 10 years. All right. All that being said, that's where we are here and that's why we are showing paper trading money, simulated trading. So you guys want to, these are actual numbers, okay? Because I, I can't, I get so passionate about this. I can't give you some BS crap because it's looking at the actual numbers. You go to any finance, uh, oh, financial news uh, station or uh, website or provider, and you're going to find that there are, certain things that are facts the opening of the day the high of the day the low of the day volume the close of the day those numbers are facts okay if you put the order in the night before you're going to get filled at the opening of the day okay whether it's real money whether it's simulated money it's irrelevant okay it doesn't really matter because the opening of the day is the opening of the day you can't fudge that number. I, I can't cherry pick and say, oh, wait a minute. This day it didn't do that, so I'm not going to include that one. No, I'm giving you real life factual companies. DFS is a real company. So is J&J. &J. J &J actually sold today. It actually hit the target that we were looking at. Okay, and where is a uh, filled order? All right, it doesn't say filled order. Johnson & Johnson, we just sold it recently. That would be, okay, right here, Johnson & Johnson. So we've done Johnson & Johnson several times over the year, and we made $2,300 off of Johnson & Johnson. Uh, Dollar General, we traded that one several times this year. Uh, these are, we, we trade them several times because we were sticking to the same companies. You know, Johnson & Johnson will pay out the dividend four times. It gives us four opportunities to trade Johnson & Johnson. Okay, you get it 10 days before the EX date. You grab the 2.5% increase. And then you get the hell on out and move on to the next company. We're not trading thousands upon thousands of companies in this account. This account is strictly for dividend on steroids to give you a higher return on your money. If you have your money in an IRA or uh, just a CD, CDs are only paying 1% or 1.1% if you're lucky. This is 4.1, and we got two huge losers. Okay, with $30,000 in loss with, with Macy's and SKT. Who the heck is SKT? Tanger Factory. I don't even know what they do. All right. That being said, let's get out of this one. But we sold one, Johnson & Johnson, which means we have money to buy another one. So what we will do is take a look at who is coming up in the next 10 days. Now today, being the 12th, we're looking at companies from the 13th, and 10 days prior will be the 27th. Actually, it'll be 26th, which is right here. Okay, now any one of these companies here, WSM, William Sonoma, uh, William Hill, Signet Jewelers, uh, Provident Financial, ITV, uh, no, no, I don't even bother with this. See this right here? Three cents, not worth my time. 91 cents, Jurgensen. Brown and Brown. Oh, Booker Group, never even heard of some of those. 
Peak Resorts, seven cents, don't bother. Hawaii, Royal Bank of Canada, 72 cents. Okay, I think we did RY once. SNY, Satellite Corporation, Lowe's, gotta love Lowe's. Lowe's is always on our list because we always trade Lowe's. It's a household name. Um, it's a dividend king, means they've increased their dividends for the past 50 years. Okay, to be a dividend king, 50 years of increasing dividends, year after year after year, more money to the shareholders. Okay, Lou, uh, uh, Kaiser Aluminum, Fast is Fast Terminal Corporation, and CLX is Col uh, the Clorox Company. Okay, any one of these companies is a great companies to look at, and they all, most of them, uh, have options. So let's see <sighs> what looks good. All right. Let's look at CLX. All right. Clorox starts the year off at 122. Within a couple of weeks, finds a low at 111. Okay, you got a double bottom there, the 111, 112 area. But only trades in that area for about a month and a half. Jumps back up to the 120 area. Ooh. Within a week or so, jumps up to 136 and travels sideways. In this little range between 132 and 138. In the past couple of weeks, she dipped below that, being the 130 area. And that's where she is at the moment. Now, she got the dividend coming up, okay? And she always shows promising on our uh, strat, on our, on our software. So let's see what the seasonality looks like on, on Clorox before we decide to get into Clorox. All right. This is what we like seeing. Now, seasonality, for those of you who don't know, is basically taking 10 charts or 10 years of data and putting it on top of one another and then coming up with an average movement. So over the last 10 years, this is what the company's done in this time frame. Now, why do we use that? Well, because we're not inventing anything new. Clorox is bleach. All right, plain and simple. They've been using bleach to watch clothes for years, disinfect stuff for years. Is there anything new and interesting in the company? No. It's just same old, same old. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Same old thing. Come in, make the bleach, go home. Come in, make the bleach, go home. Same thing. You're not expecting any huge changes in Clorox. Okay, so that being said, it's a little bit of uptrend, which is great. So let's do that and see if we can collect that 84 cents. CLX. <coughs> All right. Now they do have options on it, but I'm not doing options on that. We're just doing the dividend capturing strategy. We're going to buy. All right. For those of you who, who have not seen me do a dividend capturing or a, a dividends on steroids trade, this is basically how we do it. <coughs> <coughs> After we take into consideration the software and all the charting and the uh, charts and the seasonality, we come over to the bid and the ask. This is what you sell it for. This is what you buy it for. I'm going to right click on the ask. And this little window is going to pop up. Now I can hit any one of these buttons and it'll give me something new and fun and exciting. But come down here to buy custom because that's what we want to do. We want to buy it. And these are all preset with the trigger trade. Allows me to, to set a number, okay, automatically buy 600, sell 600 of CLX. And it says right here, the price is the market price, which means first thing tomorrow morning at 9.31 a.m., this should fill regardless what the price is. What happens then, as soon as it fills at 9.31, the second order, the sell order, will automatically be triggered at whatever the market price is, and then it would automatically add 2.5% to that. So I'll give you, for instance, if the Clorox opens up at 100 even, 
okay, and I buy it at 100 even, it will automatically sell for $102.50. That's 2.5%. Okay, instantaneous, the fastest trade that I've, I've ever seen uh, using this was six seconds. You bought it at the open, six seconds later, I was out with my 2.5% profit. Like, yeah, I could have gotten more, but nope, not being greedy. I just want that little 2.5% jump up. All right, that being said, let's find out exactly how much we can trade. All right, just for the fun of it, let's go and do 5,000. So this is going to tell me how much money I have. Hey, is, did you see that? It rejected. So once it rejects, this all preset, uh, resets to exactly how much money I have to play with. So I have $43,799 to play with in this account. So what we're going to do is we're going to get out our calculator. And there it is. All right, so we got $43,000. And how much was the stock? Uh, that's not it. There it is. The stock is $130. All right. 43,000 divide $130. That's not right. <clears throat> Let's try this again. 43,000. 43,000. And the stock is 133. Allows me to get 300 shares. Okay. All right, let's do this again. Right click on the ask, come over to cust buy custom. Any one of these is just fine, and we're going to go to 300 shares. Okay. No, we don't want limit order. We want market order. Okay. Okay, so as soon as she opens up the market, it's going to uh, sell at 2.5% and see how long it takes. Hopefully, it takes just a day or so. If you take a look at one of, one of the pieces of software we have in the members area, it'll tell you, give you an idea of how it done in the past. And I sh All right. So let's do that. Another one. Uh, let's try Lowe's. Okay, Lowe's is a very well-known company. Now, I stick with well-known companies only because people know who they are. Okay, here's Lowe's, starts out the year at 71. Takes about a week or so to drop down to 65, which is the uh, the low of the year. And she jumps back up to 73 area, travels for a couple of months at 73. Gaps up to 81 area and travels, ooh, two months at 81, about a month at 85, back down to 79, blah, blah, blah. And then settled into the 81 area where she is right now. Now let's see what she looks like for the upcoming couple of weeks. Ooh, a nice fourth quarter recovery. I like that one. Same thing. Sideways and up a little bit. So that looks good also. And let's see how many of these we can buy at $81. Three thousand divide eighty one bucks. Five hundred shares. Okay, so let's do five hundred shares of Lowe's. And I said five hundred shares, right? Okay, what's going to happen now is we're going to buy 500 shares of Lowe's at the market. And then we're going to sell 
500 shares of those triggered by 2.5% increase from whatever we purchased from. And now this is all done automatic. This is one of the only reasons why I use Thinkorswim because they're the only ones out there that have this type of a trade where I can set it and forget it. All right, so I don't have to do anything except for wait, okay? Wait, and then I will be notified by email to my phone saying this has been sold or this has been bought and you have money to trade with. So, <coughs> excuse me. Oh, sorry about that. Sorry, that being said, we only got $3,700 left here. We can't really do anything with that. So we are done with the dividends on steroids. Okay, get out of that one. Let's move on over to the next account, which is where we have most of our activity because this is the one that's always more fun and exciting and a lot more stuff going on. You know, that one is kind of, dividends is kind of boring, but it's for those people who don't have a lot of time. Okay, you don't have a lot of time and you want to double or triple what your return is normally, get your money out of a CD that's paying 1% and pick up 3, 4, 5, even 10 or 12% just by trading, you know, two or three times a week, then fine, have at it. Or even two or three times a month. All right. Ah, where are we? All right, ACN. The first one on the list, ACN. Let's take a quick look at ACN. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole thing with ACN because we've already been here for a half hour. ACN had a nice up day. Um, our position on ACN is 135, 136. She's at 139. I am pretty confident to say that's... Uh, Golden, that's good to go. Don't have to worry about that one. CL, CL which is Colgate Palmolive. Another update. Don't really need to look at Colgate Palmolive. All right, because we get Paul, Colgate Palmolive at 72 and a half. And she's at 75. That works. CVS, I don't know what's going on with CVS. Another down day in a row. Come on, look at this. 73, 78. And I believe we got CVS. Um, at 80 at 80 and then we have the 76 76 and a half spread so this is one that we actually did a covered call on because I last week we had somebody call in and ask can you show a covered call and I just so happen to have this account open so I said why not let's show them all right so CVS we got 200 shares <coughs> at 80 and um, I believe we sold um, no actually we didn't sell them because the because the, uh, the stock price dropped on Monday, okay? Because we got it last Friday, and we sold a, uh, a covered call on it last week. We made some money on it last week. This week, we've taken the same 200 shares, and we're trying it, trying a covered call again to bring in some more money. However, at 80, it should drop down in the 70s area, and it making it not worth make it doing the trade. So we're just holding on to it. And I'm pretty confident CVS is going to go back up because she always does. All right, so we're going to lose almost all the money on CVS, which is 2600 bucks. I feel bad about that. I do. All right, Hasbro. H-A-S. Now, Hasbro had an update today, 96.60. And we have uh, Hasbro at... Uh, 95, 95.50, and 94.95. So we actually have quite a bit of positions, which is okay. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is for this week, um, or tomorrow, and this is for next week. So we get the 95, 95 and a half that expires tomorrow. Then we have the 94, 95, which expires next Friday. Okay, I can deal with that. Lowe's, L-O-W, all right. Now Lowe's had an update today. I like updates, it makes me a happy camper. Now Lowe's, we also, see, look at this. This is confusing. This is what my personal trading account looks like a lot of the times. Lots of activity, okay? So, 
do nothing but confuse the heck out of you. Plain and simple, we got 1,100 shares. And we're doing a covered call on 1,100 shares, okay? We got in at um, 81.21, and then we sold the 82 calls, okay? Uh, we actually, we sold the 82.50s for 57 cents a share, and then we sold um, uh, the 82s at 12 cents a share. So what's happening here is we're doing a covered call, which means we're buying the stock and we're giving someone else the right, or we're selling someone else the right to buy it from us for the exact same price we paid for it. Now, this looks kind of confusing, but if I go one line at a time, it'll make sense, all right? Now, we also got 50 contracts of the spread of 80, 82, all right? 80, 50, and 82, so which we need this thing to, to close above 82 in order to be profitable on this position here and if she goes above 82 we will get rid of um, this position here and nine contracts and 900 shares of lows if it goes above 82 but we'll still be stuck or we'll still have the privilege of having 200 shares because we sold Two contracts at eighty two fifty. So the only way we can be wiped out of this whole lows is if this thing goes to eighty two fifty or higher tomorrow, which is right here. That, my friends, is possible, but most likely ain't gonna happen. And it's a slight chance that this is gonna happen tomorrow. Eighty two. Okay, because she hit eighty two a couple of days ago, and could she go back there? Yeah, she could. But we don't know. All right, last on the list is T and X. T, T X N. Sorry, T X N. <clears throat> Texas Instruments. Ooh, they had a down day today, and that makes me not very happy. All right, Texas Instruments with their down day. We got the eighty nine ninety, which we are well ninety is way down here. What are the chances of this thing dropping all the way down this way? Don't get me wrong, there's always the possibility, you know, but I play odds and probabilities. Okay? Is it possible it can go down here? Yes. Is it probable it can go down there? Probably not. So we're into the money on all of them except for CVS and a couple of the lows. So that being said. Let's find out tomorrow. Now, tomorrow's Friday. I'm, I like, I can't say I'm always here, but I like to be here at two, I mean, at uh, 3.30 on Friday to walk you through whatever's happening and correct anything. So if you have any questions or you need some walking through, hey, I'm here Friday, 3.30 to get to help you guys through it. Let's see if we have any questions. No questions. Gotta love it. All right, so all that being said, and I did say quite a bit tonight. I'm out of here. So you guys have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow at 3.30.